So we predicted that this exponent that, that the CO carbon dioxide emissions, if they grew exponentially, would grow to 3308 million metric tons by 2050. And but we might ask the question, uh, for the sake of comparison, what would the emissions have been if we had grown linearly instead of growing uh, exponentially? And so you might remember our P0, we said, was 962. Ten years later, we had grown to 1182. And so if we're going to talk about linear growth, uh, then we need to figure out the common difference. Now there's two ways we could do that. One is to figure out the total difference and divide by 10 like we've done before. Uh, but just for fun, I'm going to show you a different approach that goes and does exactly the same thing we just did with exponential growth. We said, here's the general model for our growth. But we know the value for P0. We know that P0 is 962. And if n is 10, then we also know that p sub 10 is 1182. Uh, and this gives me an equation I could solve for d. So I could go ahead and subtract 962 from both sides and get, uh, let's see, what is that? That's 220 equals d times 10. And then I could divide both sides by 10, and d is 22. Now this 220 is the total difference over those uh, 10 years, and we're dividing it by the 10 years to get the average change per year. So we get an explicit equation then of 962 plus 22n as the explicit linear model. And if we predicted here, the emissions in 2050, 60 years after 1990, then we would predict, let's see, 22 times 60, and I could pull out my calculator for that and get 2282 million metric tons uh, of emissions, which is, let's see, a fair amount less than 3308. Uh, and it, it might help to look at a graph to sort of see what's going on here. So if we looked at a graph, the darker line here is our linear growth model. Remember, a linear growth model grows like a line. It, it, so it's going to always increase by the same amount. So if one year goes by, the amount it increases is going to be the same as if one year goes by here and the amount it increases by. On the other hand, this sort of lighter line is the exponential model. The exponential model, if the amount that we start with is smaller, then the amount of increase we get, because it's a percentage, is going to be smaller. If we have a larger amount to start with, then in one year it's going to increase by a larger amount because the same percentage of a larger base is a larger increase at, sorry, spelled that wrong there. Uh, <laughs> and so this is going to be a larger increase uh, with the exponential growth model. The exponential growth model is going to have that upward curve that we don't see in the linear model, and the longer time goes by, the further the models are going to diverge.